Hey there and welcome back. In this video we're going to have a look on how to quickly create some rock-like surfaces using the RBD fracture along with some tips. So I start with the box and boolean out other one to create an initial shape. Place the mesh in, uh, in the grid. And in this group expression I am using some simple code to select the slope area without the back face. Using the normal Y to select all the primitives below 0.1. Next I am removing the bottom faces and finally the back face using the Z component of the normal. Remeshing the shape. Now expanding the slope group. Transforming it in an attribute mask. And using an attribute blur so it's not so harsh when we use it in the next step. In the mountain node I am disabling the Y axis and also blending the mask attribute so it doesn't affect the back of the shape as I want it flat. So to fit the RBD material fracture I am flattening the shape so we can stretch them at the end. I am also feeding my own points to the nodes using a scatter soap. And after the fracture, I am restoring the transform with a match size since I exported the X-form from the transform node. As you can see, we have the longer shapes that we can remove from the sides and create an interesting rock surface. In the fracture node, I just played with the edge detail and noise to add some more variation. Then I am assembling it into packed prims so I can manipulate the pieces as single points. And using some geometry to group the side pieces. As for that bounding view, I am using the slope group and manipulating the point normals, flattening the Y axis and blurring a bit the normal attribute, so I can use it in the extrude nodes, otherwise it will extrude all over the place. You can have a look at the file from my Patreon and see in detail what I'm doing. And finally, I am blasting the selected pieces within the group. Now you can play with the scatter seed and find a good looking shape. Unpacking, fusing the points and using a VDB from polygons just to remesh the shape and get rid of the different internal pieces. Creating a slope mask so I can use it inside the volume VOP. And in the VOP I have these three simple whirly noises with some distortion, mostly manipulating the frequency of each component to stretch or flatten the noise. I am also multiplying all the noises with the slope masks so we get no distortion on the top part. More of the same that I've been sharing on, on the channel and Patreon tutorials. Then calculating the ambient occlusion and curvature so we can use it for texturing. And in this point bob creating a mask for the top part using the normal Y. And also some sort of wet map for the bottom part using the bounding box. But feeding a, a noise to the position so we can get some distortion going. And then caching a few variations. As for the texturing, using the same workflow as the last video, taking advantage of the generated masks along with some color correction to create some variation on the textures. Again, using the Material X CGS Tri Planner to avoid repetition and better normal mapping and displacement. And that's about it. Hopefully you learned something new. Uh, I surely did. And if you want to support the channel and get access to the project files and exclusive tutorials, check out my Patreon. Thank you and see you in the next one.